Yeah, so this. <laughs> See how this goes. I feel I should put like a little disclaimer leaving this live. This is story time. This is stories from my past. And this story time is going to talk a little bit on topics about my teaching at a college. And I was teaching computer networking and I was teaching ethical hacking. Okay, that's like computer hacking for good. So I just want to make clear that I'm in this video. I'm not going to teach anybody how to hack anything. That's not the purpose of this. This is just to tell a story about my time as an instructor at a college I'm teaching this material. So this is not be taken as me teaching anybody how to do that in this video. I call this story time, ITT Technical Institute, and my time there teaching ethical hacking. First, let me give you a brief history of this private for-profit college. In 1946, ITT Tech was established under the name Educational Services Incorporated, but it wasn't until 19. 86, that all its campuses across the country went by the name ITT Technical Institute. In 2004, ITT Tech came under fire for high-pressure recruiting tactics, falsified paperwork, high default rates on student loans, and an inadequate education standards. In 2014, ITT Tech charged among the highest intuition fees, ranging from $45,000 to $85,000 per year and had the highest default rate of student loans. In that same year, Time Magazine ranked ITT Tech as number two on its list of the five colleges that leave the most students crippled by debt. In 2016, U.S. Department of Education barred ITT Tech from enrolling any new students who used government loans. Very shortly afterward, ITT Tech closed its doors for good and, and good riddance, really. This is the story of my time working there as an adjunct instructor, which was not that long before they were shut down, probably circa 2010. It all started with a message. I don't remember if it was an email or a message through LinkedIn. This dude from ITT Tech Campus in Everett, Washington asked me if I would be willing to teach a couple evening classes at the college. Two nights a week, I would teach computer networking. Another two nights a week, I would teach ethical hacking or white hat hacking. Now, I should explain what white hat hacking is. Is a hacker that tests the security of the system with the permission of the owner. An example of this is Microsoft's Red Team. Microsoft has a group of employees that they call Red Team. Their job is to try to hack the company internally in order to find vulnerabilities that need to be fixed. I will briefly mention that there is also black hat hacking, which is what you hear most about in the news. They are the bad guys who try to steal assets or information for personal gain. Now there is also gray hat hacking, which means that the hacker has good intentions, but they don't have the owner's permission to do it. Now, on to the story. At the time I took this job, I wasn't privy to the troubles and accusations that ITT Tech had at the time. I should have been a bit suspicious because of the way I was recruited. I did teach before at the University of Michigan for a bit. After graduating, before I moved from the state to live in Minnesota, but there I was, getting the rundown of the place, the teaching material and the equipment that I would have available to me. I remember the head of the department throwing shade on the previous instructor stating we have all these fire boxes in the closet and the previous instructor never got them out for class well 
I would learn later that those fireboxes were defective. They were these power computers with Linux-based firewall software on them. I had pulled one out to use in class only to find out after a half hour of messing with it that one of the network cards was blown in it, making it completely useless for class. So, um, you know, most of the students were great, but the pace sucked, the equipment sucked, and the teaching material was terrible. ITT Tech printed their own textbooks for all the classes. There were errors in them, including some basic grammar errors. The pay that I got for the classes, counting the time that I would spend grading papers and preparing for class, was less than $3 an hour. By the way, when you hear about adjunct professors living in their cars, that is why the word adjunct basically means they get paid almost nothing. I had a regular day job, so I didn't have the problem of having to live in my car, but I knew the college was taking advantage of me. Some of my students had day jobs as well. Some worked at for Comcast, now Xfinity, and of course, some were already familiar with the tools of the trade, so to speak. The student Wi-Fi there was completely untrustworthy. In class, I had one student hack the email of another student. They didn't do anything other than read a couple emails, but I let them know that they shouldn't do that in my class. As far as I was aware, there was only one guy there that worked in IT support. His job was to manage the network connectivity there and was supposed to make sure that those broken fireboxes were not broken. But this dude was all attitude. The other thing I found a complete surprise is that they wouldn't give the instructors access to the internet at the school. I thought this was ridiculous. They even had the internet ports in the classrooms blocked. So initially I couldn't access the internet with my laptop from the classroom. But, come on, what class was it that they hired me to teach there, right? Very soon I was able to connect my laptop to the port and access the internet. <laughs> By the way, that is a perfect example of gray hat hacking. There you go. <laughs> anyway, I was given the test to give out. I was not allowed to change or remove any of the questions on the test. The school told me that I could only add questions to the test. And of course, there was usually a question or two on the test that was just plain wrong. And I would, I would, I would come out and tell the students up front. I would say, for example, for question number 12, the school wants you to answer C, but the real answer is D. I'll accept either answer as being correct. One time, the IT guy walked by the classroom and saw that I was connected to the internet port in the wall. He told me, hey, that is not allowed. Later, one of my students told me that the IT guy went up to him and, and asked him, how was I able to get to the internet? You know, because they had all these protections put up. Of course, he pled ignorance. He just said, shrugged his shoulder and said, I don't know. <laughs> laughed. <laughs> I just laughed. There, my students were looking out for me. <laughs> but, you know, that job didn't last very long. And shortly after, the, the whole thing folded up because the whole thing was kind of a scam. But when the government pulled their um, student loan support from that school, I mean, it just collapsed. I mean, they were just basically draining the government, really. And charging the students exorbitant tuition and had me there making almost nothing to teach the class. It was capitalism at its finest.